I'll start with the uh, worst news, and that is that deaths related to COVID-19 in Australia are uh, picking up pace. We've now seen 40 people in uh, Australia lose their lives uh, with COVID-19 related uh, reasons. Five of those were recorded yesterday, another five today, so a quarter in just the last two days. It's, it's happening as we're seeing more and more people developing serious cases of COVID-19. Just to give you an idea, there are now 448 patients who have been hospitalised across the country. That's up 9% just since yesterday. 96 of those are in intensive care and 35 people are on ventilators. So there are significant numbers of people in a serious condition, uh, as uh, you might expect uh, kind of several weeks into this outbreak. It does take some time uh, to, to, to uh, you know, lots of people uh, who, who get sick of takes a week or two to do so. So as, as we see, despite the fact that we're seeing cases start to drop off, we are seeing that lag in, in deaths and we, we should expect to see that continue to increase. There has been some good news today. Just 104 new cases recorded so far today. It's the smallest daily increase that we've seen in almost three weeks, which is a very good sign. Why haven't we declared uh, victory over this pandemic yet? Well, one reason, the slowing of the rate of cases in Australia it largely corresponds to and can be attributed to a slowing of overseas arrivals importing uh, the disease. So it means uh, as overseas arrivals have slowed to a trickle, we're seeing increasingly fewer of those. The other thing to keep an eye on is that testing rates have been going down. New South Wales and Victoria just today have uh, rec reported only about half as many test results as they had been averaging for the past week. So that's why many states have started encouraging doctors to test more broadly, test anyone with respiratory symptoms, particularly in some of those hotspot areas, as they try and find any pockets of local transmission that they didn't know about. That local transmission is at low levels at the moment, but we've seen with this infectious disease just how quickly small numbers can become big ones. Yes, and talking about big numbers, let's look at the United States. How are things tracking there? Some very big numbers, some very scary numbers, almost 1.3 million confirmed cases around the world. Again, consensus is that number probably in, in reality much higher. More than a quarter of the positive test results in the world are in the US. That's growing extremely quickly. Uh, and so are the number of deaths, almost 70,000 around the world, just under 10,000 of them in the US. But at the rate they're going, they're going to leapfrog Spain and Italy and have the, have the most deaths recorded in this pandemic of any country before not too long, possibly within the week. So how does Australia compare to some of these countries that you're talking about, like the United States and Italy and Spain? We'd much rather be, you'd much rather be in Australia than the United States uh, at the moment. Let's have a look at these trajectories. What we've done here is we've changed the uh, scale of uh, the epidemic curve so that you can more easily compare their paths, shifted them so that the outbreaks all start at the same point. And you find when you look at all of the countries, there are a few sort of clusters of countries. There are a series of Asian countries, many of whom dealt with the SARS uh, pandemic uh, and have, you know, uh, because they've lived through that, developed um, more of a culture of wearing masks, of hygiene, and also in this pandemic have implemented wide testing and uh, contact tracing. A lot of them have had fairly flat trajectories, although certainly not out of the woods yet and certainly bracing for more waves. Some of the Anglophone countries, the US, uh, the UK and European countries have had much steeper trajectories, a trajectory that Australia started on itself, but is flattening out a lot quicker. So you'd much rather be in Australia than uh, the US, for example. Some of these Asian countries, Singapore, South Korea, Japan, still the model citizens. Okay, Casey Briggs with the latest on the numbers there.